And breaking tonight, new fallout in the heated fight over the Patriot Act and whether opposition from Senator Rand Paul and his supporters is leaving America at risk as some charge. Last week, the senator mounted an 11-hour sort of filibuster to head off debate on extending portions of the intelligence bill because Senator Paul thinks it gives the feds too much power to collect your personal data without any accountability. Then he forced an early morning vote on Saturday that left the Senate with no way forward. And he has since been attacked by not only the White House, but also by New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who accused Senator Paul of putting his personal beliefs above the safety of our citizens. Joining me now, Republican presidential candidate Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. His new book, Taking a Stand, Moving Beyond Partisan Politics to Unite America, is out now. Also with us, his wife, Mrs. Kelly Paul. She joins us for an exclusive interview. This is the first one together. She's been traveling across the country supporting her husband's campaign efforts. Great to see you both. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. I'm happy to have you both here because, not to begin on too sappy a note, but you seem to have a genuine love affair. Uh, and your book really touches on your love for your wife and how important she's been to you and the man you are. Can you sum it up for us? I couldn't do it without her. Um, home is where she is, and when I'm gone, I miss her. He's, he's a man of many words, isn't he? <laughs> You're feeling all warm and fuzzy at the moment. <laughs> but seriously, because the campaign has been saying we're probably going to be seeing a lot more of Kelly. And knowing her a little bit, I can see why. Do you think that she gives you a softer edge? Do you think she sort of reflects the side of your personality we don't usually see? Well, yeah, and I think uh, she completes me in many ways. And uh, she helped me with my book. She helped make it a better book. But she also helps when she's out on the road because she can talk about uh, a part of me that maybe I'm not always com comfortable talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you've been watching him all along. You guys have been together for over two decades. When, when he got in the dust up with a couple of female reporters, which, for the record, I defended him on the sexist charge, very sexism well, charges. Very well, I might add. That, it was nonsense. So the sexism charges were totally nonsense. But what was that like for you to see that accusation be leveled against him? It bothered me because that's just not who he is. And that's one of the tough things about politics is sometimes you're defined in a way that is totally the opposite of who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I tried to point out to people that week was that Rand spent over a decade in a one-on-one -on -one surgical practice with a female ophthalmologist. So his entire professional relationship is working with strong female surgeons. Well, when you see things like that happen, for both of you, I mean, why would you, I know you, you think you can do some good, but the thought of putting your family through a presidential campaign, and then if you win, <laughs> what that does to your life and your family, I mean, why? Well, I think that's why it took us a long time to decide to do this, because it is wear and tear on a relationship and on a family, and a lot of things really aren't fair. Sometimes we have a standard line, and people love controversy, so it's like, you know, pit people against each other and say, you know, he doesn't like women or something. Uh, things that are completely inaccurate, but people like it because it gins up controversy. Mm -hmm. But it is difficult being a candidate. Mm -hmm. I know, and, and I mean, obviously some of it's fair game, and including We've been talking about the NSA, and that was in the introduction of you. That's become a big issue in the country, and that is your issue. I mean, you've been the standard bearer on, on opposing some of these things that the Patriot Act allows. And yet your critics accuse you of overstating the case. For example, one of the things that you said was that the NSA is spying on all your phone calls. And, you know, that's not true. And it doesn't have cell phone data in almost any case. Well, it's actually not what I've said. I've been saying the NSA is collecting all of your phone records. And by connecting the dots of your phone records, uh, they've determined they can determine your religion 85% of the time, who your physician is most of the time, what medicines you have. They can even tell when you go to the doctor by inference, maybe what kind of procedures you're having at your doctor's office. Oh, the, the, the Wall Street Journal had a report that said that the NSA is collecting records of at most 20% of U.S. calls, and in general, they do not look at cell phone records. Right. The interesting thing is two Stanford students put apps voluntarily on phones for 500 people and just looked at their metadata, but then they tried to deduce through other means from just the phone records, and they could tell most of the time what your religion was, who your doctor was, what doctor you were going to see, what kind of diseases you had, that's not and how even what kind of works. procedures you had. But that's not how this program works. This program, and this is what the, the critics outline, they say that the, it, you get no names, you get no addresses, no personal identifying information, that the NSA doesn't even know you exist. They just right. have phone numbers and only look further into that phone number if a terrorist calls the number. Right. 
But our founding fathers didn't like the idea of general warrants, warrants that didn't have a specific name on, that were not individualized, that didn't have any suggestion of suspicion, and that weren't signed by an independent judge. That's what the Fourth Amendment's about. And so when we have one warrant and the name on it says Verizon, and then they collect all of the information from all of the Americans who have phone records at Verizon, it doesn't really seem to be consistent with the Fourth Amendment because it's not individualized. There wasn't suspicion. Mm -hmm. And I actually frankly think it makes us less safe. But they can't even access that data unless something suspicious right. happens, a terrorist calls. And, and, but and the what, collection of what the data What people like itself. Andy McCarthy have said is the Fourth right. Amendment doesn't protect you right. doesn't you have no right in Verizon's and, information. And that is the debate. That is the real debate we have because the question is, do you have a privacy interest or a property interest still in records that are held by other people? When you sign up and you have phone service, you do have a privacy agreement. Your phone company's not supposed to share that with your neighbor. What if the phone company were sharing that with a rival network? Who you call, when you call. That doesn't elevate well, it to a constitutional problem. Well, the question is whether or not you do have Fourth Amendment protection in records that are held by other companies. Once upon a time... But this, they said 1979 that they, that they don't. The well, U.S. Supreme Court well, said no. Well, it still has not yet to be been decided in the modern era. Once upon a time, they talked about your papers within, your, within the castle. Now I think we are talking about papers that are not real, but they're virtual and they're in a cloud. And the question is, do you have a privacy interest or a property interest still left in those records, even when they're held by a third party? I think that this has not been fully decided. We have never had a court case at the Supreme Court level decided on whether a single warrant could apply to all the records of all Americans. Right now, the only ruling we have by the second appellate court, a court right below the Supreme Court, is that it's illegal. That even the Patriot Act, which I object to, but even the Patriot Act, if you accept it as is, says that the current bulk collection is illegal. Mm, but there, there, was a, there was a Supreme Court opinion back in 1979 that specifically said you don't have a privacy interest in well, the phone in, company's in, records in, in on the, your phone. In Maryland versus Smith. But the thing That's is, right. it was talking about one person and a few records of somebody who was accused of committing a crime. It was never and has never been adjudicated whether you're looking at all Americans all of their records, all of the time. But this you, you can see they don't listen to content. This is an enormous program. Right. This is collecting all Americans' records just, all of the time. But just number. No, t only 20 percent, according to the Wall Street Journal. Just because they're not very good at it. But if they could get the it, here's a complaint. If they could get all of them, they would. They're just not very good at getting them. In fact, the Republicans, my opponents, some of them, have been complaining they don't collect all of them just because they're not very good at doing it. But here's what we don't know. Also, there's another program, Executive Order 12333, and under that program, we, we should be asking the question, are they collecting our texts, our emails, are they also collecting our credit card information? If I have your credit card they information... They say no. Yeah, but here's the thing is, you're telling me what the court says, that the Fourth Amendment doesn't protect your credit card information. But if it doesn't pro protect your credit card information, think of all the things you buy. Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you gamble? That's in your credit card information. What have you heard? And you're, you're going to tell me, <laughs> but you're going to tell me that there's no protection of that by the Fourth Amendment. I think it needs to be adjudicated by the Supreme Court because I do believe that you retain not only a privacy or an expectation of privacy in your third party held records, I think you retain a property interest Let as me well. ask you about the privacy thing because that's another thing some of these you know, critics have said. Why is Rand Paul a constitutional conservative, he says, an originalist up there talking about a privacy right in the U.S. Constitution, which is very controversial. That's something right. that was sort of read into the Constitution. And most co conservatives say it doesn't belong there. Justice Scalia yeah. would say yeah. it's not in there. Well, here's the thing is when the Bill of Rights was put together, there were many objected to having the Bill of Rights attached because they were afraid that if we listed out certain rights, people would say, well, what about this right that wasn't listed? So they put the Ninth Amendment in there. And the Ninth Amendment says that those rights not listed are not to be disparaged. So I don't think there's a complete listing of your rights in the Bill of Rights. There's a partial listing. And then the Ninth Amendment says unenumerated rights are still yours. The right to privacy is somewhat encoded. The word privacy is not in the Fourth Amendment, but it essentially is the amendment that talks about the idea that things within your house are yours and are private. The problem is we now have a virtual house. We have a virtual place where we store our records. You can determine more from metadata. Here's the thing. The head of the NSA says we kill people based on metadata. So don't let anybody tell you that your metadata is not important. Well, but they're not killing Americans. They're, they're looking not. at the, if the terrorist calls a number, then they find out what pattern right. the number followed after they get a warrant. Right. And ultimately, is, that may the, lead to information the is, against the terrorists. If we are killing people based on metadata, 
there's a lot of information you can get. And they feel pretty certain they, who they have is the correct person by metadata. So what I'm saying is, do you want to release all of that to your government? Mm -hmm. There have been times in our history when our government didn't do such a good job protecting us. In the civil rights era, our government spied on civil no, rights. No, I get it. I get it. And there's World issues about this. They, I mean, they, I, they I, kept I, Japanese Americans. I get it. And, and we had, we had James Americans. Clapper up there lying to us explicitly yeah, about so what they did. There are a lot of reasons I get it. why just, we have to be doubtful. I wanted to ask you about what the critics are saying about your argument, because it's, this is right. the hot debate in the country right now. Now, let me ask you, Kelly, I want to shift to you again, um, because you now, if Senator Paul wins this election, you would be the first lady. And I'm wondering what you think your role would be. Do you see yourself as more of a Laura Bush type first lady or more of a Michelle Obama type first lady? <laughs> you know, that's an easy question. Yeah, <laughs> kind of sounds like measuring the drapes a little, but uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a loaded question. But uh, um I, don't. I think that they've both done an amazing job. They've both been very gracious. Uh, the job has a lot of challenges. I will say I do admire uh, the things that Michelle Obama and Jill Biden have done with our veterans and our wounded, our veterans' families and wounded veterans' charities. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've worked a little bit on with Jill Biden in Washington. So that's something I'd like to continue. Is it bizarre to think that you and Bill Clinton are vying for the same job? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bizarre is one word I would use. <laughs> I mean, you you got in a little bit of trouble, and Senator Paul got in a little bit of trouble because you, you described Bill Clinton's behavior as predatory. But I'll tell you, a lot of the viewers that, you know, we have agreed with that. And, you know, if you just look at the history of the allegations that were brought against him, do you regret that comment? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, I, I regret in, in some ways that people kept asking Rand about it, and he was originally asked on Meet the Press if he agreed with the comment six months after I made it. Why is it not and fair then, game to talk about Bill Clinton's history? Uh, I think it is, which is why I made it. And it was more, actually, though, I think some of it was misstated. Um, my point was more about the hypocrisy in the Democrat Party, that it wasn't more roundly condemned, um, that people, this is the party that purports to be the party of women, and this was a workplace situation, a 22-year-old intern, and she was 22, people have now tried to go back and say, oh no, and the President of the United States. I don't consider that a peer relationship. Um, you know, it's not criminal, but it's certainly something that we would say is not appropriate in the workplace. Do you think there's a double standard? Do you think that if a female uh, presidential candidate uh, first lady candidates, a female first lady candidate, had any kind of allegation against her of inappropriate behavior with someone who is half her age, do you think that the male spouse would have any shot at becoming the president of the United States? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I will know. answer my own question. The answer is no. No. It would be because we still have a little, I don't know if that's a glass ceiling we really want to crack exactly, yeah, but it's, exactly. it's one I don't think we could. Anyway, good luck. You got your own book. What's it called again? True and Constant Friends. True and Constant Friends, and it's about her best friends, seven of them, and the female leaders and role models in their lives and how they got to be powerful women like yourself. And I really wanted you to call it Stand with Rand, but it's <laughs> Taking a Stand by Rand Paul, and it's out today. You can check it out. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.